Alright, in this video, I will do fine tuning of Llama 3.8b with Onslaught library using a 4 bit quantized model and with ORPO technique that is odds ratio preference optimization. And first, a quick recap of the ORPO technique here. So, I'm looking at the Hugging Face official page of ORPO Trainer and it says that uh, odds ratio preference optimization, this technique is using preference data. Uh, this method posits that a minor penalty for the disfavored generation together with a strong adoption signal to the chosen response via a simple log odds ratio term appended to the NLL loss is sufficient for preference aligned SFT. So this statement is almost taken from uh, the technical paper. So no worries if you don't understand every part of it because uh, uh, all these techniques are already uh, implemented in Orpo Trainer and Orpo Config and we are just going to use that directly. But still it is helpful to at least understand the basic overall flow of the Orpo Trainer. So the traditional fine tuning usually works like this that first you have a safety tuning which adapts a model to your specific task that is supervised fine tuning. And then comes preference alignment where methods like reinforcement learning with human feedback that is RLHF or direct preference optimization or DPO are used to make sure that the model generates more preferred responses than rejected ones. But there is a problem that the SFT LLM that is SFT fine tuned LLM can sometimes make the model generate unwanted answers alongside the preferred ones. That's why preference alignment is necessary. It helps make the preferred response stand out more. Now let's talk about the ORPO fine tuning. So ORPO offers a neat solution to this problem. It combines instruction tuning and preference alignment into one single training process. ORPO tweaks the standard language modeling objective by adding an odds ratio term to the loss function. This odds ratio loss gently penalizes rejected responses and strongly rewards preferred ones. This means the model can learn your specific task while also getting better at generating preferred responses. And the best part, ORPO has been integrated into major fine-tuning libraries like TRL, Exolot, LLM Llama Factory, etc. And studies show that ORPO performs better than other alignment methods across different model sizes and benchmarks. And when you are using the ORPO trainer from Hugging Face, you have to follow a particular data format and that's been uh, very well written here. So it says expected dataset format. The ORPO trainer expects a format identical to the DPO trainer, which should include three entries, which are prompts, chosen and rejected. For example, your dataset should be like this prompt. You have a list of prompts here. Then for each of these prompts, you have a list of chosen, that is uh, the answers which are preferred and also rejected, that is the answer which needs to be rejected. And uh, that's exactly the dataset format we are going to use here. And once again, I'm going to use this onslaught library. I really like this one because the main reason is because it's so fast. With uh, onslaught, you can uh, fine tune the latest Llama 3.8b at uh, almost two times faster and use 63% less memory than flash attention 2 plus hugging face. And the Llama 370B, you can train 1.8 times faster using 68% less VRAM. So definitely check out this library. All right, back to my VS code. First, just install the onslaught library with this command here. And uh, then also you need some other libraries, uh, all the common candidates, uh, PEFT, TRL, Accelerate and Bits and Bytes, uh, because here the model that I'm going to use is a 4-bit quantized with Bits and Bytes. So that's the reason you need Bits and Bytes here. And uh, then uh, importing the modules. So the most important module is this one, Onslaught Import Fast Language Model. And uh, yeah, here I'm just defining some of the basic hyperparams. So with first language model, you can just bring in the relevant model from uh, by running this uh, code, the first language model dot from pretrend. And the model name here, note that I'm using Llama 3.8b BNB 4-bit. So this is one provided by Unslot and they have actually support for quite a few other model at various quantization level. Uh, because this one, uh, 4-bit one will run much faster and will take much VRAM, less VRAM. So that's the reason I'm 
selecting these and also the results are not too bad definitely it will it will not be equivalent to the original one uh, but it's not too bad it's very much usable and note that these fast language model class from the onslaught library provides an optimized implementation of large language model for uh, your job and uh, the max sequence length right here tells the maximum number of tokens a model can process in a single sequence and the max sequence length for uh, various model differs obviously here i have taken 4096 on uh, one on the smaller side and load in 4 bit setting it to true means that we are loading a 4 bit quantized model and once a model has been loaded here after running this particular cell then uh, we are ready to uh, define this get peft model so fast language model to dot get peft model is to attach the adapters in order to perform qlora fine tuning once adapters are attached you can use the model directly within any class from the HF that is Hugging Face ecosystem such as SFT Trainer from TRL. The purpose of get PIFT model is to attach adapters to the language model. Adapters are small trainable modules inserted into a pre-trained model. They allow you to fine tune the model on specific tasks or datasets without retraining the entire model. Uh, which can be computationally very expensive and time consuming and uh, the data set that we will be using for this particular training is this one dolphin sft v01 uh, preference so as you can see the structure of the data set is very much suited for dpo or orpo training because we have instruction we have input we have uh, accepted and rejected let's uh, just go to the viewer section and check out the actual view of the data yeah so each of these uh, samples, you have an instruction. We need this column, definitely. The input column is not needed for this particular training. We have an accepted answer and we have rejected. All right. And as we already discussed that we need at least three columns for ORPO or DPO uh, training, uh, which is instruction, accepted and rejected, which we already have in this data set. And once again, the goal of ORPO is to penalize the rejected samples and increase the likelihood of the accepted samples. So let's um, do a little pre-processing on the data uh, because everything is just right. We just need to make it a little cleaner. So first define a prompt format. So this is my prompt string. Below is an instruction that describes a task paired with an input and provides for the context, write a response that appropriately completes the request. Then there goes my instruction, there goes my input and there is my response. So we have this little util method format prompt. Uh, this function extracts the instruction input accepted and rejected fields from each sample. These fields are expected to be present in the dataset and we do have that. And so these lines just extracting those and then the function constructs three new fields for each sample required by the ORPO trainer which are prompt, chosen, rejected. My prompt is just uh, alpaca prompt dot format. That's instruction. That's my prompt. And the chosen is uh, these accepted ones and the rejected is rejected ones. And also note that after uh, the accepted and rejected, we are adding US token uh, that is uh, which is coming from the tokenizer uh, just to segregate between chosen and rejected. Uh, here, note one particular thing that uh, while uh, we are doing alpaca prompt dot format with instruction and input that is we are filling up in the prompt this instruction section we are filling up and also the input section but leaving the response empty uh, as you can see from here that is the third one that is a third string is an empty string and this is because the empty response placeholder is intentional in orpo training the model needs to generate a response based on the prompt so that's exact reason the response part remains unfilled or empty for the model to complete during the training. And also note another thing that uh, these US token is added to sample chosen and also to sample rejected, but not to prompt. Why is uh, it's like that? So adding the US token to chosen and the rejected ensures that the model knows where each response ends. This is essential for training because it uh, defines the boundaries of the response, making the model task clear. 
but sample prompt does not receive the us token because it is not a complete piece of text the model generates instead it serves as a context based on which the model generates the chosen or rejected responses which includes the us token to indicate their end so just to illustrate this point here is an example uh, so i have a sample here and uh, this is my prompt so after applying the alpaca prompt format i will have this kind of output that uh, i have an instruction below is an instruction that describes a task uh, blah blah then instruction the actual instruction and then input but see the response is empty and based on these whole prompt the model will now generate the chosen and the rejected so I basically don't need a clear marker after the prompt because that's part of the instruction, part of the prompts. But I need a clear marker, which is US token after each response. So this is my one response and this is my another response. And I definitely need a marker between them to understand which is which. All right, next is uh, these two lines from Unslot, import patch DPO trainer and then execute that. So patch DPO trainer is needed to ensure that the DPO that is direct preference optimization specific metrics are correctly displayed in Jupyter or Colab notebooks when using the HF transformer library. And the reason is because the HF transformer that is Hugging Face transformer has uh, two classes called the notebook progress callback and notebook training tracker. And these classes are used for tracking the training progress of DPO models. And these classes do not natively support displaying DPO metrics out of the box. Hence, we need to patch these, uh, uh, this particular method here. And after that, we are pretty much ready to train. So just define your training configuration. And here, for any ORPO training, you need to use these ORPO trainer and ORPO config. Uh, and all these um, ORPO config configurations are pretty standard. Uh, I am not uh, using anything special or anything really exotic here. So you can just uh, read through it. And then with uh, this line, you actually execute the training. And this will take uh, from a couple of minutes to almost one hour or more, depending on the size of your GPU. And then the inference and uh, for inference i'm using fast language model that for inference so the for inference method is a static method of the fast language model coming from the onslaught library uh, and it prepares a trained model for inference by modifying its configuration and wrapping the generate method for faster inference so if you just uh, look into uh, Unslot Library's GitHub repository, the source code, you will find that at, at first, uh, it recursively sets the gradient checkpointing attributes of the model and all its sub-modules to false and the training attribute to false to disable gradient checkpointing and training mode during the inference. And these are one of the reasons that this particular method is so fast. And note here that for the inference, I am following the same prompt structure. So the first string is my instruction, then the next string is the input, and the third string is empty. That should be the response from the model. And uh, once you uh, get your output and then decode the output, uh, finally I got the answer of 13, which is the next, uh, next uh, Fibonacci number after this series. And you can also use text streamer for the generation of the tokens, like what I have done here. And with text streamer, the only difference is it will be a continuous inference. That is, you can see the generation token by token instead of waiting for the whole time. And uh, the, for actually executing that, everything remains same. Only after you uh, get your, after you define your input right here, then you have to pass that uh, tokenizer through the text streamer. That's the only difference. And then for saving and loading the model, here I'm using safe pretrend, which will save the model locally. And instead, if you want to push it to Hugging Face Hub, then just uh, use model.push to hub. And the next cell right here is for loading the LoRa adapters we just saved for inference. But actually, currently, this particular cell is not getting executed because I have set here at the very first line, if false. So if you want to uh, execute this cell, just set the top, uh, this one, if true. So setting if false effectively disables a code block, meaning it will not execute. This is often used to prevent 
execution of code that is either not ready to run or not needed for the current execution or for uh, just demonstration purpose which is uh, which is the purpose here similarly this particular cell is also for demonstration and uh, this is just to demonstrate that if you want to use hugging faces this module auto paved model for causal lm but this is absolutely not recommended in this case because uh, if you can use always use unslot because it can be very slow since 4-bit model downloading is not supported uh, natively uh, with this module yet whereas unslots inference can be almost two times faster and then saving for float 16 for vllm so earlier we saved the model normally and this particular way of saving here using these two method is only for float 16 directly and select your uh, save method as merged 16 bit for float 16 and merged 4 bit for in 4 saving and after these another option to save and push the model and that's for llama.cpp and ggeuf format the main point is that uh, unslot library supports llama.cpp and ggeuf format natively so you just can use this particular method push to hub ggeuf and say pretend ggeuf that will save your model in ggeuf format oh, what a beauty and if you're thinking what are the format supported for ggeuf so right now i'm looking at the onslaught library's wiki page uh, in their github repository and let's find out yeah so allowed quants so these are all the supported quantization option for uh saving it so pretty much everything is supported f32 f16 q80 up to q4 km everything so no worries you can just go ahead and save directly natively your fine uh, fine tuned model into any of this format and in general i would suggest uh, go through these wiki page of onslaught it gives uh, quite a few important information various ways of fine tuning with this onslaught library uh, for example loading lora adapters for continued fine tuning uh, then fine tuning only the lm head and mb token matrix uh, all these options are available and these are pretty handy for example if you want to fine tune only this lm head in your uh, get pift model you pass a module to save uh, and then just pass those layers names of those layers and that's it so yeah this page is quite informative all right that's a wrap for this video thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one